All right, guys. Joining us here on the program is the two-time NCAA champion, 2008 Olympian, the former Bellator welterweight champion, the one welterweight champion, still undefeated and recently retired. He's Funky Ben. Of course, Ben Funky Asker. And Ben, welcome back to Submission Radio. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, guys. I appreciate you guys having me. And uh, and what's the happy Wednesday down there now? Yeah. Yeah, we're in the future. Nothing much happening. Tomorrow should be fun for you guys. But welcome to the show because we saw a picture on Instagram. Um, this one was from November 30th, and you're on the couch. Uh, you got the kids with you. It says, retirement feels good. So, Ben, tell us, how's retirement life been treating you so far? It's good. It's, it's really good. And so, obviously, I'm not retired in other aspects of my life. I'm still active there. Uh, but, you know, not and not – Having to check my weight, not having to force myself to work out, it's been it's feeling really, really good. And actually, man, I've had some injuries nagging me for like uh, like probably a year or two. And so it's really funny that when you stop training so hard, all of a sudden the two of these injuries have been starting to heal better. Well, how, how, how about that? I feel like that's the kind of thing that sort of makes one want to come out of retirement. But just curious, what, what are the <laughs> injuries and, and how much of, of those were a factor of you sort of retiring from the sport? Um. They were, they were definitely a consideration. I mean, it's like one thing I had on my left hip slash left low back, it was just like an everyday nagging pain issue all the time. And uh, and honestly, I kind of thought it would get worse when I when I retired because, you know, I'm not so active mm. sometimes. But, uh, man, it started feeling really, it's like it felt better than it felt in a, in a very long time. And that was something I was dealing with. You know, like I said, like every single training session, every single day, it's having pain there. Uh, you, you mentioned that's sort of a part of the retirement. What was the main, I suppose, reason for retirement? Did you have other reasons as well why you wanted to step away from the sport? Well, my my, uh, my main one was that, uh, or my main couple, I guess. Uh, I, I always said I read a lot of biographies growing up of athletes from all kinds of different sports. And one of the things that always struck me about athletes is they, they never retire in time. They always wait till way later, and they never save any enough money, right? So they, they always end up changing their mm-hmm. goal, and they always, they always end up bankrupt. And so that was kind of my thing is don't stay too long and don't spend all your money. Uh, but the, the interesting thing is, obviously, you know, you still look great at your age, you know, even in your last fight. W- was there ever, like, a specific moment in a fight or in training where you sort of took it as a sign or, or felt like maybe you weren't as good as you used to be and that was kind of when the light bulb went off that, you know, I need to be very careful about, you know, my career. Maybe this is the, the, the right time to separate. Sure. Well, yeah, it's very interesting because, and, I, and I've said this in a few different interviews, but it's interesting because in MMA, I didn't start till I was 24 years old, right? Mm. And so my body can't handle nearly the level of training that I could, say, five years ago or 10 years ago. Like, I feel like five and 10 years ago, I, I was a freaking machine. I could just go and go and go and go, and, and I can't do that now. Um, and, but the other thing is, obviously, skill-wise, I was getting better, right? I mean, it takes a long time to learn how to do something really well. And so, you know, I think even in my last, very last fight, you thought some new skills that maybe I didn't have early in my career. And so it's really this weird place because skill-wise, I was getting better while physically maybe I wasn't. Mm. Um, and so that, that created a really interesting dynamic. And so I, I feel like I'm still at the top of my game, um, and, but that was where I wanted to retire. Out. I wanted to retire at the top of my game, not, not far down the hill. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's still a bit of a chance that we might see you in a super fight. We saw you challenge GSP recently. And I mean, considering your current retired status, how serious is this challenge? That's serious. I mean, that, that was before. When, the moment I said retirement, I always left it with a caveat. And the caveat was uh, the caveat was that if I get to fight and prove I'm number one, then I would do that. So I guess that's the biggest appeal to you about this GSP fight, right? This would be sort of proving that you're number one. And do you feel like beating GSP would kind of show that, you know, you could have in fact been the UFC champion all these years at 170? Because that's, I guess, kind of been one of the biggest curiosities surrounding your career. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, no one knows where I stand because, you know, I've had literally in my entire career, I've had one competitive match and that was... um, that was when I was two and a half years into my fighting career. And so, um, you know, people don't know exactly how good I was. And, you know, a good friend of mine, Tyrone, is the number one welterweight in the world. Uh, he's he's a champion, obviously. 
And, you know, he made a statement the other day saying that if I, if I would give my opportunity, I'd be better than the UFC champion. So I don't think you can have a, a better recommendation than that since he's achieved everything he's possibly achieved. Mm-hmm. Well, what did you think of the recent news of GSP vacating his middleweight title and then his coach John Danher saying that maybe we may never see him fight again? Wasn't well, that what, what you expected? I expected that. I kind of do. Do you buy it? Because I kind of feel like you know, if you're anyone from GSP's team, now's not really the time to be downplaying Kalidas. You know, after vacating the belt, is, is that kind of how you took it as well? Well, I, I knew that. I mean, my strong feeling was that there was no way he was ever going to fight again at well, or, sorry, middleweight. This was the one time he would because you know I think he had a good idea that he was going to beat Michael Bisping. Uh, but there's no way he wanted to fight. Um, well, like Robert Whitaker, he didn't want that fight. Uh, so, you know, I, I definitely think that we'll never see him middleweight again. Now, will we see him fight again? I'm not sure. What What did you think of his win over Michael Bisping? Um, it, it was a good fight. I mean, obviously, he put him down with the left hand. But before that, I think he be very clearly won the first round. I think the second round was kind of up in the air, but I was leaning towards Bisping. And I think Bisping was, uh, despite being on bottom, winning the third round by landing so many strikes from bottom and, you know, and cutting GSP multiple times. And so, you know, I, I don't know, I, I saw the fight swinging in Bisping's favor, um, and then obviously GSP put a, a very quick end to that. Yeah, of course. And so I, I think given sort of the, the options between, you know, who he has now, you look at guys like, say, Anderson Silva, maybe this, you know, Conor McGregor fight. H- how do you feel, I guess, you, you sort of fit in a, as an option? And I, I guess to sort of play devil's advocate, what would you say is in it for GSP to take a fight with you? Well, it's either for GSP, he's going to make some money. And I, th- I think he's still getting hit hard. And so I'm not making the, the compelling case that, that Tyra hits a lot harder than me. So if you don't want to be hit hard, you could fight me instead of Tyra. Do you believe that GSP would be interested in a fight with Woodley? Because we haven't heard him say anything about what's yeah, happening he, next. he hasn't said anything about it. Do you, do you find that do a bit be- odd? And how, how do you take that? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what he's doing. Sometimes you don't know what GSP is doing. You got to keep you guessing. <laughs> well, one of the biggest obstacles, I suppose, uh, to overcome if you and versus GSP was going to happen is, is, of course, the well-documented relationship between Dana White and yourself. How would you see that working out, the relationship between you and Dana, if this fight was to come oh, together? Yeah, obviously, obviously there's some hurdles. Um, well, I, <laughs> I think we can see something happen in the next six months to a year that would possibly open up the possibility of a little more clearly than, than right now. Um, you know, right now, obviously, uh, the Ali Act is going through Congress. I, th- I think that could possibly pass in the next year. And then, you know, the UFC has some, has some pending lawsuits against them. So I think that could, uh, that could possibly affect it also. So just to be clear, if this was going to happen, you would be waiting until after the the Ali Act would be implemented in MMA, right? No. So this would be like in a year or so? Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm saying that would make it easier. Right. Well, is is there a way to possibly do it sooner? Is there something that you would, I guess, I guess, hope for or expect, or, or something that would, I guess, make this? I don't think so. Beg your pardon. I think you guys are just have to wait and see. I think you guys are just have to wait and see. Um, just speaking of Dana, he was in a scrum recently, and when your name was brought up, he acted like he really didn't know if you were still around. Why do you think he doesn't really want to acknowledge your existence sometimes when media brings you up? Because he fears me. Did it, did it sort of, I guess, rub you the wrong way in any way and make it hard to envision working together? Or do you just sort of see it as him playing the game and, and not really meaning anything behind it? Dana White's a scumbag. I, I don't think anything he says with any value. Just curious, why, why do you think he'd, he'd fear you? Especially if you can come in and sort of, you know, put on a great fight for George St. Pierre and potentially make, you know, a good matchup. Because he's very, very, very insecure and he abhors anyone who won't cater to his every will. Do you, have you guys ever met face-to-face or spoken face-to-face, and how did that go if, if it ever happened? No, not, not really. We have not. Well, I guess going back to this GSP fight, how, how do you see something like that going between you and George? It's, it's a fight that people have sort of theorized for a very long time now. Yeah, I, I, see, I see it pretty simply. George doesn't like tough fights. And when George gets in a tough fight, he takes people down repeatedly, and he's very good at it, very good at it. He's very good at maintaining top position. Uh, I'm not going to go away easily. I will be a tough fight, and George will not repeatedly take me down. And if he somehow takes me down, he absolutely will not keep me down. So that's how I see it going. Mm. 
if he did come back and if he did fight GSP, obviously fans would, would love to see stick around and, and keep fighting in the UFC. So would you be open to coming back on a multi-fight deal? And if you did fight GSP no, and beat fight. him, would we would be able... Sorry, I couldn't hear you, Ben. What did you say? I said one fight, that's it. So just to be clear, there's there's no one else that would ever bring you out of retirement. It's basically GSP or bust, correct? Well, if, if somehow Tyron were to lose, which I don't see happening... And there was someone else who was kind of a clear number one. I would potentially consider fighting them. Otherwise, no, not really. When, when, when you say clear number one, you'd fight him for a contender spot, or you'd want to fight them for for the belt itself. I don't give a damn what kind of, what is on the line. I, I want to fight who's ever number one in the world, who which would then, when I beat them up, make me number one in the world. Obviously, you and Woodley are really, really close and, and, and trained together. He's had a bit of a rough time with the UFC himself. He, he's spoken about the fact that he may even vacate his belt if his GSP if it causes his GSP fight to come together. What do you think about the experience that he's had with the UFC being champion and also, you know, sort of some of the negativities that he's had to deal with thus far? Yeah, I, I think it's pretty par for the course, and I, and I think it goes to further the statement I made earlier that. Dana White really can't stand anyone who won't cater to his every whim. And Tyron's a st- very strong, very smart individual. And he doesn't cave in every time Dana puts a little bit of pressure on him. And so I think that's why there's definitely some issues in their working relationship at times. Is there by any chance anyone else in the UFC that, you know, maybe you would see uh, it, it being, I guess, easier to strike up a relationship with? Because we know some fighters, they, they don't really deal with Dana as much. Would, would that be something that would make... I guess this easier to, uh, you know, if you were to ever be in the UFC. Uh, I don't know. And just finally, on the situation at hand, a lot of people are talking about GSP versus Conor McGregor. Would you be disappointed if that's the super fight that ended up happening rather than the one between you and him? Yeah, GSP versus Conor is not a super fight. Conor McGregor is 2-1 and one in his last three fights against, against someone who is not even very good. So uh, I don't think Conor deserves a super fight against George. Hmm. We'll let you go in just a moment, Ben, but just obviously if, if this is the way, if this GSP fight never happens, you still are undefeated, you still have an incredible record, how, how would you feel about your legacy if you know you never step in the cage again? Fantastic. And, and, and to top it off, I've never really worried about my legacy uh, in the first place. I, I just uh, take every fight I could and I've won every fight I could and, and that's it. It's as simple as that. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a good time to be retired. The end of the year is coming up. Christmas is around the corner. New Year's is around the corner. We know you have a wonderful family. As we wrap up this interview, Ben, share with us a little bit of a glimpse into your retirement life. What are you guys planning to do for the big holiday break? We imagine it's the first time in a long time where, you know, you don't have to worry about what you eat, going to training, not being able to enjoy the holidays to the full way that you really could. So share your plans with us a little bit. Yeah, I'm just, uh, we're staying home. Actually, I just had a kid like two days ago, or three days ago, maybe. I had a, I had a son. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. Wow. Thank you. That's our third kid, so we're just going to stay home and, and lay low. What, what, what is the name of your, your brand new son? Ozzy is his name. Ozzy, no way. What a, what a coincidence. You're talking to a couple of Aussies, and, and, and Ozzy is... Uh, Aussies uh, in the world. Uh, uh. Do, you, do you think you'll get Ozzy in, into, into wrestling so he can be like his, uh, like his dad? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. We'll see if he loves it, but uh, he'll at least give it a shot. Well, it's exciting times for now, Ben. We know you retired from MMA, but there's a lot of things on, on your plate as well. For all the listeners around the world right now, what do you want them to look out for from Ben Askren in 2018? We know this potential fight with GSP is on the side there, but if it doesn't happen, what are some of the fun projects they needed to be keeping an eye open for? Uh, Max, my brother and I are just growing our, our uh, wrestling academies. It's called Aspen Wrestling Academy. And, uh, check, you can check us out on Facebook. I put a lot of good videos up there. There you go, guys. If you want to learn wrestling, obviously, uh, you've you got to go to one of the best, and that is Ben Askren and the Askren Wrestling Academy. In the meantime, follow the man on Twitter and Instagram, at Ben Askren. Ben, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. 